so i think it is time uh, welcome everyone thank you for joining us for today's webinar for the global network project towards study and work in japan and the audience for today's webinar belong to the region of southwest asia so we are joined in this webinar by international students from the above mentioned region mainly from india sri lanka bhutan nepal bangladesh and pakistan my name is thiya joshi and i am master student in the department of civil engineering at the university of tokyo this is the session 6 of the webinar session hosted by the university of tokyo india office today we are presenting study and work in japan session under the kind guidance by the university of tokyo india office followed by the presentations from risumaiken asia pacific university university of sukuba shimane university i will be joined in this facilitation by ms khushi who is a student at keio university tokyo our webinar is scheduled for one and a half hours just a little housekeeping before we get started if you have any question during the presentation please type them into the q and a box of the zoom control panel we will try to answer them during the presentation so a little brief about the risumaiken asia pacific university which is a private university and located in the spa in bay city of beppu in kyushu prefecture the southernmost major island of japan the university is focusing on international management programs especially relevant for students in asia pacific regions besides having exciting courses like accelerated graduation program for bright undergraduate students to finish their program earlier than usual university of sukuba is a national university located in the japan's science and technology city as the city boasts of over 20000 phd scientists being employed there this place offers a unique mix of tradition and modernity with consistent top rope rankings in japan and across the globe shimane university is a national university located in the picturesque shimane prefecture and has been at the forefront of innovative researches like in the field of medicine besides having some popular training programs in skiing offered to international students and i must say all of these offer undergraduate and postgraduate programs for the students with opportunities for quality research leading as well as uh, which will offer you the opportunity to learn as well as simultaneously earn through generous part time work opportunities besides i must also tell that universities in japan have almost uniform education standards to provide quality education through opportunities for research publications to the students and they are buzzing with enormous energy so so much like they are having so many club activities like skiing manga club karate club and many others to bring out the best in the personality of an individual i again request that during the presentation if you have any query that please send them in the q and a box and not in the chat box for comprehensive reply by the experts in the panelists now without further delay i will that i will turn over to ms chakshi from the university of tokyo india office to start the proceedings as a motivator and guide to the students for study and work in japan ms sakshi please yeah thank you mr george uh hello everyone thank you so much and welcome uh, we are so excited to have you here for today's session uh, my name is sakshi roy and i'm the program assistant here with the university of tokyo india office so let me give you a brief uh, introduction about our uh, office our office the university of tokyo india office serves as one of the overseas offices for shared utilization by japanese university under the green 30 project uh, we provide comprehensive information of japanese universities and uh, we organize seminars and education fairs throughout india and we also manage committees for coordinator for study in japan So today's webinar, the Study and Work in Japan session six, is sponsored by MEXT, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology in Japan. Through all these sessions, our mission is to introduce Japanese universities to you and to assist you to study and work in Japan. Uh, there will be three different Japanese universities representing in each session: national university, public university, and private university. So therefore, I request you to participate in all sessions to get familiar with Japanese university. Uh, Japan is considering uh, India to be one of the most important countries in terms of academic partnership, and we hope to increase number of international students studying in Japan. 
So you'll get to know all the details regarding opportunities to study in Japan from our uh, online sessions. So please participate and uh, know more about education opportunities in Japan. So thank you so much. I hope you'll consider studies in Japan. Please enjoy today's session. Uh, thank you, Ms. Sakshi, for breaking the ice and welcoming the diverse background of the students about the way towards studies and work life in Japan. So I will just share the agenda. So we have finished the introduction by Ms. Sakshi. Uh, now I will uh, invite for a very special and informative talk by Ms. Kushi, who is a student at the Kyiv University, Tokyo. And I assure everyone her talks will be very fruitful for young students to make them comfortable and lead them towards making a wise decision, which is a very crucial point in their academic life. Uh, Ms. Kushi. Thank you, Mr. Dheeraj, for the introduction. I share my screen now. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, it is visible. Thank you. So a very good evening to all the panelists and attendees. I'm Kushi Javeri from Keio University. And today I'll be talking about the study and work life in Japan. So I'll start by giving a brief introduction about myself. I was raised in Tokyo and I graduated from an international school in Tokyo. I'm a second year undergraduate student at Keio University and I'm pursuing my bachelor's degree in environment and information studies. At present, I'm a member of the India Japan Laboratory and the GIS Laboratory at Keio University. I'm also a recipient of the Keio University Scholarship, and I've previously worked as an intern at Shibara Institute of Technology, Hitachi, and I was also a member of the Social Innovation Hackathon that was held last year in collaboration with well-known universities in India, including IIT and NIT. So why should you choose Japan as your destination to pursue further studies? Firstly, Japan is the third largest economy in the world with a population of 126 million and 47 prefectures. It is a member of the G7 summit with other developed countries, including US, UK, Germany, Canada, and many more. Japan ranks ninth in the Global Peace Index and has topped the Safe Cities, in, uh, Safe Cities Index for the third consecutive time. There are a range of international cuisines such as Indian, Korean, Chinese, Italian, Nepalese, and Japanese available to students coming from the overseas. Recently, culturally appropriate food, including halal, vegetarian, and vegan options are also being created. Health policies have proved to be very beneficial to international students as 70% of the costs are being covered by the government. Several universities in Japan that offer English programs at undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral levels. In Japan, undergraduate programs are for four years, graduate for one or two, depending on the program you're applying for, and doctoral for three to four years. The English programs in Japan are well-renowned because the professors have great expertise in their respective fields and have also created unique approaches to teach students. Japanese universities are categorized into national that are founded by the Japanese government, public that are laid by local public entities, and private that are based on founders. Universities also provide resources and infrastructure so that, they are able, so that students are able to utilize them efficiently. Libraries, research labs, student lounge, gymnasiums, and dormitories are some examples. So the fee structure is an important aspect while applying to universities. So we have presented a chart that helps one understand and compare the differences between the tuition fee in the US and Japan. The tuition fee in public universities in the US is five times higher than the ones in Japan, while the private universities in the US is three times more. The living expenses are somewhat similar. However, Japan is much cheaper than the US in terms of overall education. Financial assistance is also provided by university, universities or Japanese government in the form of internal and external scholarships. The mixed scholarship and JASO scholarship being some of the well-known scholarships within international students. In order to apply for the master's or PhD courses, it is crucial for the applicant to contact the supervisor of the program for admission assistance. The job opportunities in Japan are countless 
Graduates from Japanese universities usually tend to work for well-renowned multinational companies such as Amazon, Google, Toyota, and Panasonic. Graduates, especially with a computer background, have a great scope in Japan. The average salary after graduation is 3.9 million yen per year, which is 27 lakh rupees. Japan also has the lowest unemployment rate, which is 2.34%. Visa procurement is not a very tedious process. The student visa can be upgraded to working visa if the student is able to find a job within Japan. So as one can infer from this graph, the number of dispositions for employment purposes from international students has been escalating over the years. 2019 witnessed double the capacity of international students than 2017. There's a 50% increase in the number of dispositions. The number of students from Southeast Asia has been increasing because of the wide job prospects in the country. There, are, there is a rise in job opportunities in Japan uh, because the demand for international students has been increasing. So many international students are coming to the country to pursue further studies and a career in Japan. So from my experience, I can certainly say that my university has opened doors to several opportunities and experiences. The picture on the left is from an event called the Sokeisen, which is a term used for the, bas for the baseball game between two prestigious universities, that are Kyo University and Waseda University. The picture on the right is from the hackathon that was held last year in collaboration with IIT and NIT. In the India-Japan in India -Japan laboratory, we conduct social and cultural events so that students from both countries are given the chance to communicate and collaborate. In the GIS laboratory, we aim to approach different challenges of the environment by using various computer-based tools. Lastly, another very interesting factor of studying in Japan is the opportunity to experience various seasons. Compared to other countries, Japan does not experience harsh One can enjoy seasons in the country, for a great blossoms in spring to the stellar views in fall and winter. The diverse weather conditions brings the chance to experience different seasons and travel across the country. I hope my, my, hope my presentation encouraged you to consider working or studying in Japan, and I hope I was able to give parents and students an insight into the study and work life in Japan. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kushi, for giving such a crucial piece of real information compiled from the academicians and professionals working in Japan and guiding the students as well as parents towards making informed decision and choices. So I will just share the agenda slide again. So we have finished the presentation by Ms. Khushi. So now I will turn over to uh, Ms. Ishana Malkani, India representative of Rissumaikan APU. As I briefed earlier, Rissumaikan Asia Pacific University is a truly international university as it boasts of 46% international students from over 94 countries and regions with world-class faculty having alumni presence from more than 150 plus countries. Our presenter today is a graduate of University of Mumbai and her interests are quite diverse, ranging from education field nonetheless, besides having philanthropists focus on animal welfare too. And I request the students to make the best advantage of the vast experience of the expert panelists of Rissumaikan Asia Pacific University. Thank you, Ms. Ashana. Thank you, Mr. Joshi. I'll just share my screen. So thank you for the kind introduction. So I'm here to tell you a little bit more about our university called Ritsumikan APU. It's APU for short and some students get confused because um, our trust, that is the Ritsumikan Trust, has two universities. One is called Ritsumikan University, based in Kyoto, and ours is called Ritsumikan APU, based in a town called Beppu. Um, so our university is the younger of the two. We were founded in the year 2000. So we're just 21 years old, recently become, uh, we've become an adult. Um, so we, uh, we are located in a town called Beppu, which is in the southernmost island um, of uh, Kyushu. It's in the south of Japan and this is our campus. Um, we're lucky to be located on a hilltop with fresh air and a very beautiful view of the Pacific Ocean. 
Um, so coming to our figures, um, as Joshi San mentioned, we have 47% uh, international students. Um, this is the figure from uh, the year 2020. Um, I think in 2019, it was 50%. And hopefully, um, after we're done with this pandemic, it'll go back to that. So we are very much focused on bringing international students to Japanese shores. Um, so we have students from 90 different countries, um, as well as faculty from various different countries. So you're bound to meet students from all over the world. Um, we are mostly focused on undergraduate because out of uh, 5,800 uh, students, we have about 5,400 seats for undergraduate and 200 um, at the master's and PhD level. So we are ranked by the Times Higher um, Education Rankings um, as 22nd in Japan out of 800 universities overall and fifth out of 640 private universities. Um, this for us is a huge achievement because being such a young university, it's not always easy to climb up the rankings. Um, but hopefully as we age, we'll continue to do so. So this is where we are located. Everyone knows where Tokyo is. Um, so we are a one and a half hour flight from Tokyo. It's pretty convenient. The closest airport is Oita Airport and um, Beppu is based in Oita Prefecture. So we are a mid-sized city with uh, just 1,20,000 people. That's very small by Indian standards. Um, but there's a lot of activity in the town of Beppu because it's um, one of the most popular tourist destinations for its hot springs or onsens. So we are not um, a very large multidisciplinary university, but um, we're very niche. We are focused on just two areas. Um, one is uh, business and management and the other is social sciences. So these are the undergraduate courses that we offer. Um, students who are looking for undergraduate courses, you would need to choose between our two colleges. This is APM, our College of International Management, where you can get um, a BBA degree. And this is APS, which is our College of Asia Pacific Studies, where you can get a Bachelor of Social Sciences. So you would need to choose between these two degrees or these two colleges when you're applying. Um, but we have these various specializations uh, under each college. Um, which you can keep changing up until your fourth year. So even let's say if you're choosing a BBA degree and you want to start with uh, accounting and finance as your uh, major or your specialization, let's say if you decide that accounting is, you know, um, you know, it's just not working for you or you're not enjoying it, you can then swap over to marketing or strategic management e even till the end of your third year. So we allow a lot of flexibility with that. Um, so as, um, as Yoshi san mentioned, our degrees to are four years long. We follow the American system. Um, and uh, you basically in APM, you do get to engage a lot with industry. We have a uh, tremendous industry tie up. So you can be part of global business case challenges where uh, large corporations uh, send their executives to our campus to conduct these competitions. Students get together in groups and make presentations to the executives and win prizes and sometimes even land jobs and internships. Um, we also have field studies. Um, and uh, also another important point to note is that we are credited by AACSB, um, which is a pretty huge achievement because uh, only the top 5% of management schools receive this accreditation globally. And at the MBA level, we're accredited by AMBA as well, which uh, puts us in the top 2% of business schools globally. So coming to APS. So with APS, we are very well known for our hospitality and tourism specialization. That's because we've received accreditation from the UN's World Tourism Organization. Um, but we're also very strong in the other areas. Um, here as well, we have field studies, um, you know, uh, a lot of, of hands-on work where you get to uh, do social work, get to be on the ground, um, you know, doing, doing your research or doing uh, projects. So again, a lot of engagement with society um, and with industry. Um, a lot of students who study at APS would be going on to work for, uh, you know, big companies like Dentsu, uh, would be maybe working with government um, in diplomatic relations, working for the UN, etc. So I know a lot of Indian students are worried about what job opportunities are there if you study social sciences, but 
for us um, in our university, we notice both business students and social sciences students seem to have equal opportunities in the job market. So um, all our courses are offered in English and this makes it pretty convenient for international students. You can choose whatever course you like and it's going to be available to you in English. Um, in the first year uh, at university, you would be studying Japanese and by the first six months, you would probably be able to go out and get a part-time job where you can speak um, you know, basic Japanese. So we try and uh, when, when you're staying on campus in our on-campus housing, that's in your first year, we try to pair international students with, um, you know, so let's say if you're in Lankin, we try and pair you with, um, with a local Japanese student. Um, and you, of course you have your privacy because there's a dividing door. But the nice part is that you get to practice your Japanese, get to, uh, you get local insights from the Japanese students. So that's something we try and do. And then after you're done uh, with your first year, we move you off campus. You have uh, several options um, in terms of apartments where you can share apartments with your friends. In fact, the cost here comes down to about 15,000 Indian rupees for rent and utilities uh, per month. So actually your second year onwards, your living costs uh, get cheaper. So part-time jobs, as I said, uh, there are plenty of opportunities both on campus and off campus. And we have uh, an office, dedicated office on our campus that will help you get part-time jobs. Um, a lot of students report that uh, part-time jobs manage to help them in covering their living costs, especially the second year onwards because your living costs are lower. So this is a great option for people who, you know, want to, students who want to become financially independent. Um, and in terms of what kind of job opportunities, of course, when the younger you are, uh, you'd be doing more basic jobs like uh, working in a library, working in a cafeteria, could be assisting a professor, could be working with a hotel. Um, and of course, as you, as you progress with your degree, you can get internships. We have a very vibrant student life. So being a small university located on a hilltop, um, the students like to keep the campus uh, very colorful and very exciting. Um, so we have over 110 student-led organizations. Um, these include various clubs, so um, it's a lot of fun. We even have um, a multicultural week every year. There's India Week. Um, so Indian students um, get together and put, put up performances and um, you know, plays where um, other students get to understand what Indian culture is about. So, of course, we do have a lot of scholarships. Um, our APU tuition reduction scholarship ranges from 30% to 100%. Um, on average, I've noticed Indian students getting about 60 Of course, we have a lot of students getting 80% and a few getting 100% too. So this scholarship is a scholarship we give you in hand once you got admission, once you passed our admission process. Um, so this will be guaranteed for you for the four years of your education as long as you're um, maintaining discipline and passing your subjects. Uh, we also, there are also private scholarships, which I'll come to in a bit. So this is your cost of attendance at our university. Um, it'll obviously depend on what scholarship you've got. So if you've got a 0% scholarship, your maximum fee would be about 9 lakh rupees. Um, but as I said, on average, Indian students get about 65% scholarship. So then it comes down to 3 lakh rupees a year. Um, then you have admissions fee. So this is the cost of attendance actually for the first year. So all these expenses are actually a little higher um, in the first year, as I mentioned. Admission fee is one-time payment only in your first year. You don't have to pay it in the second year. Um, so, so yeah, so you put all the expenses together. Here we've calculated for you an approximate cost of living, which comes to under 7 lakh rupees. Um, but uh, as I said, this will come down in the second, uh, second year onwards. And if you have a part-time job, then probably it won't, it won't really cost you anything. So um, if you were to take all these expenses together, it comes to about 13 lakh rupees if you have a 65% scholarship and just in your first year, um, second year onwards, this cost would go down significantly. So we have, um, we also have 150 exchange partners. Um, so if you'd like to go to, let's say, Singapore Management University or you want to go 
um, to Australia, to the US, to Europe. Uh, you can do a semester or a year um, spent at one of our partner universities. And the good thing is that your scholarship, your tuition reduction scholarship will apply over here as well. So um, we have a 96% job placement rate. That's not to say that 4% um, are unemployed. It's just to say that they've not reported what they're doing to our careers office. So maybe they've joined their family business. Maybe they're not working, but they've not, uh, they've not reported back to us. So um, officially we can say we have a 96% placement rate. It could be 100%, but we don't know. Um, we do have over uh, 200 companies coming to our campus every year to recruit students. So this is great because otherwise students would have the burden of traveling from Beppu to Tokyo and to Osaka to, you know, take interviews and to meet with the big companies at their headquarters. Um, but this is something that our career office organizes every year. So it makes it a lot easier for students to get their interviews without having to travel. So where can you find some of our graduates? Um, I know Indian students who've been hired by Apple, by Mitsui, by Dentsu, um, and of course, all these other large organizations, be it, um, you know, multinationals or, or even big Japanese companies. Uh, we have a lot of major employers that you may recognize. Um, and uh, we also have a, a lot of students going on to study at graduate schools abroad. So they get into top universities like Harvard, Oxford, King's College, London, etc. So um, another piece of good news is that we have, um, we are one of 37 universities to be able to grant a two year um, visa for aspiring student entrepreneurs. So if you're graduating and you don't want to go for um, a job, but you want to start your own business in Japan, you have this option. So I'd like to invite you all to join us for um, our mock lectures. These are free of cost. Um, and hopefully if, if we can share this presentation with you, you'll get the links. Um, but basically one is on July 11th, the other is on July 25th. And this will give you a good picture about um, our academic strength. So undergraduate students who are looking to enroll next year, we have two intakes, there's April and September. Um, usually September works. So if you graduated this year, you can probably go in April. But if you're graduating next year, then September would be a better option for you. This is our website. So uh, just quickly to tell you about our um, application process, we have two stages. Uh, the first stage is an online application form, which um, I'd be helping you with. And then we have an online assessment, which is an aptitude test that takes about one hour long. So once you complete these two and you pay an application fee of about 3,800 rupees, you will be done with stage one. You get your stage one results. And if you pass, you go to stage two. Stage two only includes a 15 minute video interview. Um, and this is to basically assess you for your scholarship. So the stage one and stage two, and, and then you come to know your final results, you get your scholarship in hand. So basically you get your admission and your scholarship results in hand by um, the only upfront payment is uh, 3,800 rupees for our application fee. Um, our online application includes four essays, which are 150 words each. We, we'd like to see your academic scores um, and mark sheets from the 10th, 11th and 12th grade. And we'd also like a letter of recommendation from your school. Another important submission is your language proficiency. So you don't need to know Japanese, but you need to be pretty good at English. So I'll come to that in a bit. And then optional is extracurriculars. This is uh, very important for your scholarship. And uh, standardized tests like SAT could help you with your scholarship and admission if you've performed well in it, but it's not compulsory. So basically the four things that we look at for your scholarship would be um, A, your academic scores in 10th, 11th and 12th, B, your language proficiency, um, C, your um, uh, basically your overall application form with your essays and your extracurriculars, and four is the 15 minute interview that we conduct. So um, in terms of language proficiency, you can take TOEFL, IELTS or Duolingo. 
um, if you take TOEFL or IELTS, we have a cutoff, 6.0 for IELTS and 75 for TOEFL. Duolingo, we don't have a cutoff, but um, additionally, we require you to submit an English proficiency form from your school. So we've already gone through this. And uh, just to quickly tell you a little bit about our graduate program. So we have, um, again, we have two schools. One is GSA for social sciences, and the other is um, a school of management where you can get Degree. For the MBA, please note that um, this is a very strict requirement. We require three years of full-time work experience. So, um, you know, if maybe only if you're 24, 25 and you have that work experience, you would be eligible. Um, for GSA, we don't have the same requirement. So you can take up a master in Asia Pacific studies or in international cooperation policy. Here are all our, our various majors and specializations. We do have one particular PhD program. It's a PhD in philosophy of Asia Pacific studies. Um, it's very competitive because we just have 10 seats, um, but hopefully we will expand uh, to offer more courses and more seats in new course. Um, and at the graduate level, just to say that we have 98% international students. Our student teacher ratio is very strong. So you get a personal attention and 95% um, are scholarship holders. So it's even easier to get a scholarship at the graduate level. Uh, not only do we offer our tuition reduction scholarship, but of course you can al always apply for MEXT, uh, the various MEXT um, scholarships, the Asian Development Bank scholarships and more. And um, again, 100% of our classes are taught in English. So feel free to connect with us. I have a colleague based in Delhi who handles applicants from Delhi and the national capital region. Her name is Dipti. And if you are based outside of the Delhi region, feel free to contact me and I'd be there to support you with your application. So here are a few links to our websites. And we are very active on social media. So if you, um, you, know, you want to know what, what we're up to on our campus, what the students are up to, please or do follow us. So that is the end of my presentation. I hope we have some time for questions. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Ishana, for sharing such a nice presentation with the students. Uh, I would like to share one interesting piece of information with the students that the Sumacan uh, Asia Pacific University during these tough times of COVID-19 pandemic have started 150 new scholarships for the students to support their tuition fees and living expenses so they can peacefully focus on their studies. I will now start the Q&A session for five minutes for fruitful discussion of students with the panelists of uh, Resumic and APU. And uh, students have already posted their questions in the Q&A box. So I request Ms. Ishana to kindly go through the Q&A box of Zoom control panel. Or uh, if you would like me to, I can take some of the questions for you. Sure, I will. I will let you know if I miss anything, please um, alert me. So I have students asking about uh, courses like cinema or video editing. So unfortunately, we don't, uh, while we may have clubs that, uh, you know, kind of get you involved with these kind of things, uh, we don't have specializations in it. So the courses that I showed you on these slides are the only courses that we offer. Um, just so that you're not confused. Okay, what are the exams required for being eligible for masters in Japan? I think it's a general question. Um, for At least for our university, uh, the only test you would need to take is English proficiency. You don't need a GMAT or any other test. Okay. Okay, what are job prospects after the degree in Asia Pacific Studies? So, um, at the graduate level. Okay, so um, as I said, a lot, of, um, a lot of our graduates tend to work with either big Japanese companies like Dentsu, um, they've worked with, uh, you know, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in different countries. Sometimes they get posted in completely random different countries. Um, like I've, I've seen Indian students go and work in Africa or in other Southeast Asian countries. Um, you know, they just tend to get transferred there if they have interest in that particular country. Um, we see them also, uh, we have a few students who work with the UN as well. So, um, so yeah, so I guess depending on your interest, there would be a lot of options and our career placement office would 
definitely help you with finding um, you know appropriate placements uh, yes. there is a particular question from miss jyotika i think uh, can you please elaborate a little on the requirements to apply for the gsa program at mm -hmm. uh, risumaikan apu yes so we uh, that's a good question we don't have a requirement of work experience and there's no there's no particular age limit so even if you're a recent graduate you are eligible um we would we do again have a cut off for um for ielts and toefl at the graduate level so where at the undergraduate level it's six, as i showed you for graduate school it's 6.5 for the ielts and 85 for toefl so um that would be our requirement and just to say that our cut off would normally be about uh, roughly 60% in your uh, three years of undergraduate study or four years of undergraduate study for for you to get admission um that being said it's not a hard and fast uh, you know cut off it's just something that i can advise on but the higher you score of course the better the easier it is for you to get admission and get a good scholarship okay uh one quick question uh, if you would like to take any question one last question yeah since i have studied international studies can i choose a discipline related to business so that's a very good question at our university we we don't mind if you switch um you know switch your uh, degree or switch your specialization so if you are um you know an art student and and then you want to study business that's okay or if you're a commerce student and you want to or do um, you know asia pacific studies that is social sciences that's also all right so you can definitely cross over in terms of uh, fields okay uh thank you miss ishana for enlightening the students and guiding them further in case if there are still more doubts i request the students and parents to kindly contact on the links and emails given for the sumaikan apu and i request uh, miss ishana to kindly post on the chat uh, so that the students can kindly contact you Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, I will just uh, share the agenda screen again. So we have finished the resume and APU presentation by Miss Ishana. Uh, now I will start the presentation by uh, University of Sukuba. Uh, Mr. Madhi Kasumata Shah of University of Sukuba is the presenter. The University of Sukuba is located in the Sukuba Science City. and it's consistently ranked amongst the top universities in Japan and across the globe offering a diverse and friendly environment to international students the university boasts of nobel laureates in the field of science and technology besides having notable alumni in the field of sports with key olympic gold medalists including innumerable judo players besides internationally acclaimed manga artists and businessmen like ceo of line corporation and tulis coffee Our presenter today is an international administrator in the University of Tsukuba having extensive experience in the field of project management with varied interests ranging from system design to taking drama classes with some of his students were working in internationally acclaimed movies so i request the students to make the best advantage of the vast experience of the expert panelists thank you uh, mr madhi Hello, Mr. Joshi. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your kind uh, uh, invitation and uh, introduction. And uh, I'm going to go ahead with my presentation. Before that, I would like to thank uh, the team at University of Tokyo for uh, arranging this wonderful program uh, and consistently. Um, and I congratulate you on the growing, you know, number of attendees. Uh, you know, each time it, it becomes bigger and bigger. So congratulations to uh, everybody there. and uh, now i'm going to uh share my screen for now okay and if you can just give me a second so here we go there it is hopefully you can see my uh screen and uh i'm just going to minimize that for a second okay so great yeah, so great. oh by the way mr joshi how much time do i have i forgot uh 30 minutes for the presentation Okay, so I'll finish around twenty thirty with the presentation, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Great. 
Thank you very much. So everybody, uh, welcome to uh, the, the presentation um, and the program and welcome to the University of Scuba. So uh, the Scuba, Scuba University is a, um, it's a science city. It's, it's a little bit like um, Palo Alto in California, you know, where they have Facebook and, you know, all the tech companies there. So it's a little bit similar to that. It's, um, there, there, are these, there are these mountains called Mount Scuba. It's actually like a, like a twin. Uh, one is called the male one and the other one is called the female uh, mountain. So it's like, uh, there are two peaks. And um, that's, you know, and that's another story. But uh, so, so uh, Scuba City is, uh, is very close to the mountain and it's about one hour away, less than one hour away from Tokyo City. Um, and uh, so we have the advantage of having, being in the countryside, but also uh, proximity to urban center of Tokyo. Um, and uh, getting back to the topic of uh, it being assigned to 50% of the R&D budget uh, of the University of Tsukuba is, uh, sorry, R&D budget of, of the country is spent in the city. And we have over 200, um, you know, um, institutions, research institutions, uh, public and private, uh, situated in the in the system. And so um, it affords different all kinds of benefits, especially for people who really want to go into the sciences, uh, science and technology fields. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm going to move on. And uh, let's see, uh, so this gentleman here uh, is uh, the where you, know, uh, you have to earn the black belt and throw people around. Um, so that, that sport, so he, uh, he, he invented judo and he also started the school which eventually became the University of Scuba. Uh, so he was a great sportsman. Um, he was, uh, he, he was an innovator um, and he was really passionate about education. So he started out with a teacher's college and, you know, there's an argument, there's a debate, but, you know, a lot of people claim that University of Cuba is, is uh, if not the oldest university. Uh, and um, um, it, it was, um, um, uh, the, uh, we have over 2,000 international students in, this, in the University of Cuba. The total population is about 16,000. So, it, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it, it, it boasts one of the largest uh, international student community, uh, communities in uh, university communities in Japan. Um, and so, um, and we have about uh, 29 Indian students uh, in undergraduate, master's and PhD levels. Uh, in, in our university. Um, and our approach is basically like interdisciplinary approach. We have an interdisciplinary approach to education research, and we offer cutting edge research in supercomputing, nanotechnology, uh, personal care robotics, algae biofuel uh, technologies, proton cancer therapy, uh, et cetera. Um, and uh, and uh, a lot of uh, the, the research that goes on in university is really sort of like, um, I'll, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later, but um, it, it is, it sort of like goes beyond uh, one discipline because our approach is really about solving the major problems uh, that the planet faces and, and the human civilization faces at the, face at the moment. So um, we have, um, um, you know, also and in terms of uh, speaking about sustainability, I was just talking about that. We uh, scored highly in SDGs. Um, we were among the best in Japan for SDGs 11, 17, and 15. Um, so uh, obviously this is really tough, you know, important for us. And this is a reflection of our approach in terms of uh, education, in terms of research, also practice. Um, and so in that sense, it's really, uh, we are very uh, proud of this achievement. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about undergraduate level programs at first. Um, so graduate students uh, or people looking for graduate programs, please stay on um, and don't go. And uh, so I'm going to uh, talk about this first and the undergraduate level programs for this is for high school students. We have all these programs. We have uh, life environmental sciences, which offers biology, uh, agrobio, geosciences. We have international social sciences. 
we have this uh, program called Global Issues, and we have this program called Interdisciplinary Engineering. And lastly, if you have scored N2 or N3 in uh, the Japanese proficiency test, then you're eligible to apply for the Japan Expert Program. So this is sort of like a program that sort of uh, gives you a crash course in Japanese, and so you reach N1, which is the highest level of Japanese in terms of proficiency test, and then you enter, you sit in classes with uh, native Japanese people. So. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that so much today, but I'm going to focus on English programs. Um, and uh, uh, so, uh, and, and by the way, we have all, uh, you know, we have all these um, uh, disciplines and we, we offer many programs in English. So, you know, it, when, when I say English programs, it means that you don't need Japanese to enter and you don't need Japanese to exit, to graduate. Okay, so that's what it means. Um, there's a program called Bachelor's Program in Interdisciplinary Engineering. Um, so this is a, a mix of energy, uh, robotics, modeling simulation, and materials engineering. And so all these topics are taught in the first two years. Uh, and then the last two years, you focus on a particular uh, major. Uh, I've been told that you can also combine topics. For example, if you want to do robotics and information, information then uh, it's, it's possible. And if you want to do materials and uh, energy, uh, it's possible to combine uh, uh, two things. So, uh, so this is the application deadline for this is December. So you guys can start thinking about it. I've posted like, QR codes wherever it's, wherever it's pertinent. Uh, so please uh, check it out. Uh, it's an awesome program. Um, and we have a bachelor's program, Global Issues. Uh, you know, to uh, come up uh, to to train human resources, to deal with uh, global problems um, and project managers who have a systemic view of things. Um, so the application is in uh, you know United Nations related agencies or you know uh, corporations, mega corporations that are trying to become more sustainable. So they need uh, you know uh, sustainably sustainable minded. Uh, human resources. So we, our aim is to create uh, such people. It's a really awesome program, uh, which is, you know, it, it offers uh, social science courses as well, and also environmental studies courses. So this is um, something that I would like you to take a look at if you're interested in these issues. Um, if you go, if you want to go into more uh, basic things, then we have these three uh, programs under the life environmental sciences uh, department. So we have biological sciences, agricultural sciences, and then geosciences. And uh, this is a very hands-on uh, uh, program in which you know you spend a lot of time in the classroom, but also in the lab and uh, in, in looking at microscopes. And then you go out in the field and you know you you visit, uh, for example, mar marine biology station that we have. Uh, you know if it, if it's pertinent to your course, uh, it's really um, you know students have a great time uh, in this course. So, um, and if you are, and if you want to, if you're interested in social sciences uh, or want to explore that further in graduate schools, and this is a good basis for that. Um, this is again very interdisciplinary. We have courses in economics, law, law political science, sociology, and, um, and again, like I think you're mixing things up a little bit um, because because the problems that we face are so so immense and so intricate now. Um, so that's that, okay? Um, so that's it for undergraduate courses. Now, if you uh, want to find out more, please check out uh, the, the, the QR code that I set up here, okay? And you can start reading or start checking it, checking it out. Now, for university students out there or for people who are working, um, you know, I have uh, a, a set of slides for you here. So I'm gonna now talk about graduate programs, okay? Graduate programs are uh, divided into uh, large clusters. Uh, so this is really on the left side, we have comprehensive human sciences. sciences. In the middle, we have uh, humanities and, social, and uh, uh, social sciences. And then on the right, we have uh, life and earth sciences. And it's quite possible for people to take classes in, uh, in, one, uh, in one program. For example, if you are in environmental sciences, you can uh, walk over uh, and um, you can take classes at the computer science department if the if the two professors agree to have you, right? So, and and it might um, inform your research uh, when you when you're graduating. Um, 
and so on. So we encourage this kind of like, uh, you know, um, exploring of other avenues to complete your research. Um, here, um, there are some programs that are already set up to be disciplinary, transdisciplinary. For example, this is human biology. And take a look here. The, uh, so it, it, and human biology means that it's a, it, it computer science, material science, and medicine, and biological science. Uh, they all inform the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the major, yeah? And here, again, I put up a QR code if, you, if this rings a bell. So please, um, take, please check it out. Um, and also, in terms of empowerment uh, informatics, this is a program um, that uh, is, a is a collaboration between informatics, engineering, arts, uh, psychology, neuroscience, uh, clinical medicine, nursing science, etc. And so it's, it's a very uh, it's a very unique uh, uh, program, and, and I think it's 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 sort of like very uh, maybe you know it's not wrong to say that it's it's very kind of Japanese, you know, because it's it mixes art and engineering. Um, so uh, please check it out if, if this one rings a bell. Um, we have a master's and doctoral program in life science innovation. Explores food innovation and it explores disease mechanism and drug discovery. So all these very pertinent um, topics, uh, you know, pertinent to uh, or, or relating to what we're experiencing these days. Um, and here um, we have uh, a PhD in and sort of continue the conversation that uh, Professor Simpson was just having in terms of uh, graduate uh, admissions. Uh, so is that okay, Mr. Joshi? Ah, yes, um, sure. Yeah, please. Okay, so I, I think that I would rather, for, I should focus on specifics because that's what everybody wants. How, so in this case, the specific question would be, how do you apply to a graduate program in, in a public university like the University of Tsukuba? Um, and I think that this is good, this is a good conversation to have for everybody. So, you know, like, in a, you know, uh, like Professor Simpson in, in uh, for Shimane University, uh, and also, I think most universities in Japan, uh, you know, it, it, it really the focus is on the professor, not the program. Okay, that's the difference. If you're applying to a graduate program in the UK, for example, you would apply to a department of something something, right? Graduate school of something something. So we we have those names, those titles in Japan, but really the the ultimate decision maker in this case is the is the professor leading the research. Um, and so uh, this was this is a question that was asked of me during one of the chats here today as well. But you know, uh, like you should contact the professor. Okay. So uh, the first thing you you should do is you should go to a our website. Okay. And um, and you would look you would see the application. You would go to this page called application guidelines. Right. It's a it's a little bit like it's a little bit. Um, you know, not you know, complex. It's it's not simple. Uh, this is something that um, you know is, is I, I I have to be honest about it. And so here, uh, for example, you're into science and tech. Um, you want to go into let's say systems and information engineering. You you find basically computer sciences. You find it here. Okay, and then choose the program of your interest, of course, and then uh, and start and check out the application procedure. Right. And here, this is important. I believe this is the case with all of my colleagues here. The application procedure differs depending on programs. This is, this is especially true of large, sort of like comprehensive universities. Every program, every faculty is sort of autonomous. So uh, check out the, uh, the, the application guideline, okay? Um, check your eligibility. Make sure that you are eligible, okay? You have to have 16 years of education uh, in order to apply for graduate program, 12 years of education if applying to an undergraduate program. Those things are pretty much set in stone. Um, and so just make sure that you have those things, okay? Um, and um, you have to contact your prospective advisor, okay? So obtain consent to be, uh, uh, to be your supervisor and consult your research plan in advance. So check this out. In our case, we've got this uh, repository called TRIOS. So check out the, the professors, uh, check out the keywords, check out the, the papers that they've written, you know, so that you, and make sure that, you know, those, those topics match your interests or your background, okay? Um, and investigate the research works of the advisor thoroughly before contacting is what it says here, okay? 
uh, and the rest is, uh, you know, then you follow the procedure written down in the, in the, in the webs on the website of that particular program. Okay, so sign up, sign in my page, fill in the application form, you pay a little fee, uh, then you submit the documents, uh, you know, ex export PDF and so on. Required documents are, you know, again, check the application guideline. Each program is different. If you're applying, if you're applying to a medical science related program, it'll have different set of requirements compared to, let's say, I don't know, uh, information sciences, right? Uh, so, uh, but in general, we have this, um, if you, the, the, the common aspects are, you know, that you can speak English proficiently, uh, you know, if you're entering an English program, okay? And uh, you have a research plan, you have ID photo, and you have graduate certificate, you have degree certificate, um, uh, and, uh, and, and there's an academic transcript and those things. Then, then ultimately, and this is the case where everything is not done, um, is not paperless yet, you should do an electronic submission and then you can follow it up with, a, with an actual document submission. So this was a bit of a problem last year due to COVID. Um, so, and, and also this year, as, as you can imagine, right? So th th you know, this is something that, that you need to contact that particular program uh, about, right? So you will receive information and instructions for examinees. Um, then there will be an examination. Hopefully that program will al allow it to happen, uh, uh, you know, long distance, right? Um, and then there's an, an announcement of the admission results and then there's a pro procedure for uh, enrollment. So please check out the websites that I am displaying right now. And um, um, so, you know, please start researching. Uh, you know, you should have at least, you know, you should have like a, like a six month to a, a, a year long plan for this. And there's a good chance that you'll end up with a very good professor and also some funding for your research. Okay. So this is my talk regarding graduate schools. Back to you, Mr. Joshi. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Medley. Uh, can you please take some of the questions uh, in the Q&A box? Sure. Uh, Q&A box. Okay. So. Now should I read out the questions? Yeah. Could you? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, are there any courses regarding cinema or video editing in uh, Sukuba University? Uh, no, we do not. Uh, for that, we have, uh, you know, programs in design and art. Um, there are professors who have done research in, in cinema technique, uh, but I, I, I doubt that they teach in English. That's, okay. that's the honest answer. Yeah. Uh, does university, uh, university of Sukuba offer a Bachelor of Architecture in English? An a Bachelor of Architecture in English? No. Uh, it, yeah. We offer bachelors in the programs that I mentioned during my presentation, which was sort of cut off, but uh, architecture, architecture is unfortunately not there. Uh, we offer them in Japanese only, uh, and, and uh, even at the master's and PhD level. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is a question from Ms. Nidhi. Uh, does Sukuba University provide an English program to study medicine and surgery? Uh, well, uh, you meaning that can you become a doctor um, and can become a surgeon in Japan? The answer is that most universities in Japan don't have that program in English. Uh, you have to speak perfect Japanese to become a doctor in, in Japan. Uh, so uh, if you don't speak perfect Japanese then, and, and read uh, and write uh, Japanese, then it's, it's pretty difficult. But we have uh, medical sciences. If you want to become a medical researcher and contribute to medicine and science, uh, and, and, you know, and, and then, then we have several excellent programs at SCUBA. Okay. Like uh, SCUBA University has any laboratory on additive manufacturing? On what? Uh, additive manufacturing, I think uh, it is related to 3D printing something. Oh, yes. Uh, if you uh, go, so please check out the engineering department, uh, applied physics. Um, and it might be the case that you will s sort of see that, uh, see your field being sort of shared by different departments. So again, check out the, the you know, uh, the database of professors and see if, you know, do the keyword search. You know, go to Trios, T-R-I-O-S, uh, just, just type in Trios and Scuba, Google it, you'll find a, a, a website and just check uh, and uh, find, uh, find out about your uh, background. You see, I don't have knowledge of every, uh, every little small uh, topic. You know, you have to kind of find out by yourself, yeah? Uh, one quick question uh, I would like to take, last one. Uh, does Sukuba University offers any uh, MBA program 
Yes, we do. And there is, and so please check out the website. Uh, sorry, I keep saying that, saying that, like yeah, mantra, yeah, yeah. but, uh, but it's, uh, we have, a uh, we have international, uh, MBA school. Uh, it's not located in Scuba city. It's located in our Tokyo campus. Yep. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Mehdi for your, thank you. And once, once more, my apologies for the interruptions and I apologize, apologize to everybody who's, who's watching this today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you very much. So thank you, Mr. Mehdi. Uh, for enlightening the students. Uh, now I will turn over to Professor Catherine Simpson of Shimane University. I would like to share that uh, besides the natural beauty of Shimane Prefecture, the National University boasts of multidisciplinary faculties in science and technology, social sciences, including law, besides medical research and environmental science. The university also offers exchange study abroad system with dispatch period ranging from six months to one year and various notable global institutions. Our speaker today is prolific in the initiatives for exchange with international students and communities, besides being a key facilitator for job hunting guidance for international students through Center for International Exchange at Shimane University. Further, I request students to post their queries on the Q&A box or Zoom to Professor Catherine Simpson, and I, will believe, I believe uh, she will be most happy to answer the queries to your satisfaction. Uh, Professor Simpson, please. Uh, I cannot hear you. About now. Yeah, it's okay. Fine. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your introduction. Thank you. Um, I will just share my screen. Can everyone see the screen? Yes, this okay. is fine. Working. All right, thank you so much. So hello everyone, my name is Catherine Simpson. I work at Shimane University in the International Center. And I, today I would like to present Shimane University. Shimane University is a, national inter, is a national university. And first of all, you may be wondering, where is Shimane in Japan? So Shimane is about by plane an hour and a half from Tokyo. Um, and about four hours away from Osaka by train. It also has a little island patch called Oki Islands. Shimane Prefecture is a, full of beautiful nature. So you have a picture here of Matsai Castle, um, one of the national treasures here in Shimane Prefecture, as well as Iwami Ginzan Silver Mine, where a lot of silver was um, taken out of the prefecture um, at uh, year, uh, hundreds of years ago. We also have Izumo, Grand, Izumo Taisha Grand Shrine, which is famous all across Japan. Uh, it's a shrine where all of the gods during one month of, in Japan will come and visit. Um, very is not, and particularly you have, we have two different campuses. We have Matsai campus, which is our main campus, and we have Izumo campus, which is our medical facility campus. So particularly in Matsai campus, Matsai city, the tea culture and Japanese sweets are very popular. Matsai is a very relaxed and uh, beautiful place to study. The population of Matsai city is about 200,000 people, and the climate, as you can see, is very much tolerable in January, about two degrees Celsius, and then in August, about 26 degrees Celsius. Um, we also have very many different festivals. We have a lantern festival that goes around the moat of Matsai Castle. We have people that go through the streets. Um, we have a huge fireworks festival in the summer. And we also have traditional festivals, such as the photo you can see on the left, Horaiya, which um, it um, only happens once every 10 years. So about Shimane University, as I said before, there's Matsai campus and Izumo campus. It, by train, they're about an hour or so apart from each other. Matsai campus, again, is the main campus, um, and it's in the middle of Matsai city. 
and Izumo campus is located in a beautiful part of the prefecture with lots of nature um, and it's our medical campus. So about the university courses. So let me first explain. Um, here's a list of all the courses that we have at Shumani University. Now, what is different is there are courses that only international students can enter. So let me just go through this really quickly. For those of you with Japanese level N2 for the JLPT, N2 or higher, you can enter the Faculty of Law and Literature, but um, not Human Sciences. There's the Graduate School of Human Sciences. And again, Japanese only means level N2 or higher. Um, and then for the interdisciplinary faculty of science and engineering, we have the English Japanese bilingual course offered, the faculty of life and environmental science, which again, N2 and up, and uh, the graduate school of natural science and technology. And also we have the graduate school of medical research at our Izumo campus. So I'm going to go into two different ways that you can sort of study at Shimani University without having a high level of Japanese. Um, comment just a second, please. So first of all, um, as I mentioned before, our Faculty of Law and Literature um, is in, for N2 and up, and our Faculty of, here at the bottom, Faculty of Life and Environmental Science is for N2 and up. But here we have our, the interdisciplinary faculty of science and engineering, which has all of these courses here, information systems and des design and data science, mechanical, electrical, electronic engineering, architectural design, physics and material science, chemistry or science. Um, this course has an English Japanese bilingual course. So if we go into that a little bit further, what that means is there is the, in your first year, you'll be studying in Japanese and in English, and it's basic education, general education courses. And then in your second year, you will also be studying in Japanese and English. Uh, once you get to your third year, um, sorry, excuse me. So your first year, um, mainly courses are in English, but they're also going to be in Japanese, some of them. Uh, very easy Japanese, so you can understand. Once you get to your third and fourth year here, as you can see, your specialized courses and your graduate undergraduate research, the courses are purely in Japanese, but your for reports, exams, and theses, um, theses, your English can be used. So how what types of requirements are there for this bilingual course? We have, first of all, um, the departments that we mentioned here, I mentioned already on the left-hand side here, and then you need a JLPT level of N4 or higher. And then here we have TOEFL scores or an overall IELTS score of 5.5 or higher. Next, I would like to go into the graduate school. The graduate school of natural science and technology is completely in English. So um, you can take a master's course or a doctoral course. The major um, you have science and engineering, science of environmental systems, and agricultural and life sciences. Um, and here it goes into detail about what type, what fields of study are in each of these. So I know a lot of you have been asking about sort of IT. So we have information systems, design and data science, physics here as well. Um, and somebody asked before about agriculture. So we have agriculture as well. Uh, for the doctoral course, we have a major called Science and Engineering for Innovation. So what does that mean? Basically, it means that there are two different courses, Science and Engineering, which is very similar to your undergraduate, to the master's course studies, and Science of Natural Environment Systems course. So um, as you can see, a lot of the courses here and a lot of the content is very similar to the master's course, except it's more in depth. So if you want to study master's course in Japan, um, it's two years, and then the doctoral course would be an additional three years. So how do you get into Shimano University? If you want, especially if you're looking to study in English or in English and Japanese and learn some Japanese at the same time too. Um, so this is for the English 
Japanese bilingual education course. This is for the undergraduate students only. So you have the EJU, which is the Examination for Japanese University Test. Um, that is a must. Um, this test happens uh, once or twice a year, I believe, um, and that is required. Um, I can't tell you exactly what score, but um, this you need to sign up for the test ahead of time. It comes, the sign up period is before the JLPT, so I would look it up ahead of time if I were you. Uh, then you also have your TOEFL or ILL score, and then the JLPT score again of N4 or higher. For the special program for international students, the graduate courses or the master's courses, um, what's really important is that here you contact a professor and you find somebody who can sponsor your research. Then you prepare a field of study and research plan. Um, these are the two main things that you need. There's no exam in particular, but you are, uh, your admission is based solely on your contact with a professor that can help you with your studies and your research plan. Um, a lot of people were asking about Japanese classes, J Japanese language classes. So with the bilingual education course, Japanese language classes are integrated into your course. And as an undergraduate, we offer Japanese language courses as well for credit. Um, in this special program for international students, so the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology for master's and doctorate. There are um, elementary intermediate level courses and JLPT level courses for Japanese language. Um, they just aren't for credit, so they're for your own benefit. Um, like I said, again, uh, for undergraduates, you need the EJU. Um, and if you do do know enough Japanese, this is for people who have N2 and above, you can enter any of these three faculties that I mentioned before. Or if you're a graduate, um, the Graduate School of Human Sciences is Japanese only N2 or above. Um, but again, the natural Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology, Master's and Doctorate program, um, and at the Izumo campus, Graduate School of Medical Research, Master's and Doctorate program, those can all be taken in English. So just a small calendar of what the events are. Um, in February, the EG, EJU test opens, and then you have the deadline in March. In Japan, the academic year starts in April. Um, and a lot of you were asking about the MEX scholarship. This is also when the MEX scholarships open at your consulate. Um, then in, usually in July for undergraduates, um, the applications are released online. Um, and then in November, December is the deadline for undergraduate students. In our graduate school for natural science, uh, natural science and technology, technology um, you can enter in either April or October. So both of those are okay. Um, again, finding a professor is crucial. So many people also asked about tuition and admission fees. So I think national universities are more or less the same across Japan. So you have a one-time fee admission fee, and then you have this one per year, you have a tuition fee of about uh, five, uh, 535,000 uh, Japanese yen per year. Now, uh, for the spring semester, for privately financed students, for graduate students only, you can either get a full or half exemption on your tuition. So international students at, uni at Shimano University, and they have one slide on this, but basically uh, the majority of our international student population comes from China, but a surprising number also come from Bangladesh. Um, we have students, obviously, from um, many different countries. We have over 200 international students. Um, but this is just some examples of the numbers of international students that we had. This is data from May of 2020. So scholarships. Many of you were asking about scholarships. Uh, first of all, there's the MEC scholarship. So I would recommend that you research this on your own. Um, I believe our moderator today uh, gave a link to the MEX scholarship, but here's some sort of just a general rundown per month of Japanese yen, how much you would get if you received the MEX scholarship. 
There's also the JASO Honor Scholarship. Um, so in, for Shimane University in particular, we have the Shimane International Center Scholarship, which is about uh, 20,000 yen per month. And then also, just as an example, we have a lot of different uh, private scholarships that we will email out to students and it's, you know, grade based or language based or um, interest based, but um, that there are other scholarships, private scholarships that we email you about throughout the year. So uh, this link for JASO is a little bit old. It's from last year, but if you want to read the QR code for study in Japan, there's also a website called Japan Study Support, which I recommend to look for scholarships on your own. Um, many of our students, again, are supported by MEXT or by JASO, um, or they get scholarships from their own countries. Um, but then there are many students who are not supported by scholarships, and as one of our previous speakers mentioned, um, they do part-time jobs and increase their Japanese speaking level skills. And study at the same time. So many of you were also asking about student lodging. So at Shimani University, we have a student dormitory. Um, we have buildings A, B, and C, um, all of different ranging from all of different ranging prices from <clears throat> 24,000 to 4,000 to 16,000 a month um, in Japanese yen. Um, and it's sort of all of these you either have a shared kitchen and bathroom or you have your own kitchen and bathroom. So it really depends how much you pay. Um, so for those living in the dormitory, again, this is data from last year, but um, you have the university dormitory, about 80 students, and then you have also private people who prefer private apartments. And because Shimani is in such a rural area, private apartments can be um, fairly affordable. So for example, um, most people live within about 15 minutes by foot or by bicycle uh, from the university campus in Matsue. And you can get a shared type of living space room, like a share house kind of idea for about 15,000 a month, or you can get a one room for 25,000 a month. And then um, in Japan, you need a guarantor if you are a student at Shimani University, the university will be your guarantor. So that's something you don't need to worry about. So student life. <clears throat> we have a tutor system where Japanese students will support international students concerning daily life, study, Japanese language support. So for your first six months at Shimani University, you have somebody there to help you um, get through daily life, how to use the ATM, set up a bank account, get a cell phone, all these things, register at City Hall, all these things that would, might be difficult if you're not very uh, well versed in Japanese language. But uh, for the first six months while you're here, then you can get support from an actual Japanese student um, <clears throat> and hit the ground running. We also have Japanese language supplementary lectures. So the lectures have, we have beginner classes and intermediate classes, as I said before, and also classes to pass the JLPT exam. So uh, anywhere from N4 to N1. And those are included in your tuition. We also have international student field trips, obviously because of Corona, um, we haven't been able to do these this uh, last year. But um, as our moderator said, we do have a ski tour at a place called Mount Daisen, um, very close by with a lot of snow. And then there's also a field trip to Onan Town, which is, as you can see in the photo, everyone is dressed in this very traditional uh, performance art called Kagura. Um, and everyone is sort of all together and it's a great way to meet local Japanese people and experience traditional Japanese life in Japan. So if you'd like to visit uh, a place in Japan with um, very traditional I ideals and experience the real Japan, Shimane University is the place for you. So um, we also have a lot of different research opportunities. Um, Shimane University is very uh, active when it comes to working with the local community. Um, so you have research 
about the infrastructure um, in the local community built in the San'in region. So the San'in region is basically Shimane Prefecture and the prefecture sort of above it called Tottori Prefecture. Um, so those two prefectures are very connected here. Um, and we also have Tottori University. So we have um, a relationship with them as well. Um, obviously we have, it's uh, sort of the countryside of Japan. So we have an elderly population um, you know, steadily growing, which I think is a problem throughout not a problem, but um, an issue that is Japan is facing throughout the country, but especially in Shimane. Um, so we have preventative um, study research that is occurring currently as well. You also have um, sort of Shimane green, like eco-friendly projects and nanomaterial projects, as well as earth and geo environmental science projects. So I wanted to leave a little bit more time for questions just in case. Um, but the gen here's our general contact information, and I've put QR codes here as well for the graduation, uh, undergraduate and graduate um, entrance information. Um, how do you get, how you get into Shimane University, and also for the graduate school. So there's one for English and one for Japanese. Um, and then here you can see the IED Diugaku at office.shimane. Uh, u.ac.jp. This is our general info, um, and I will put this in the chat as well. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Catherine Simpson, for sharing such a nice presentation with the students. I would like to further share an interesting piece of information about the Shimane University. For environmental enthusiasts, as the university has established SDG Code of Conduct, with SDGs being incorporated in the management strategy of the university, towards construction of a sustainable society and fulfilling the motto of the university, which is growing with the people and the region. I will now start the Q&A session for five minutes for fruitful discussion for the... Okay. Uh, Professor Catherine, uh, would you like to take some of the questions in the Q&A box? I have marked some of the questions as answered live during the presentation. So you can take some of the questions. Um, let's like there's a question uh, of, uh, is there any course in Bachelor of Architecture? in English for uh, students? Um, so again, for for architectural, um, for bachelors, is that correct? Yes. That, that would be our uh, English and Japanese bilingual education course. So okay. if you took that course, then you'd have to have the Japanese proficiency level of N4. Um, and a fairly, you know, good grasp of the English language, but that has um, architectural design. Uh, and uh, there's a question from Mr. Surya regarding, is there any animation course uh, in uh, Shimane University? Unfortunately, we do not offer an animation course. Okay. So uh, further, there's a question from Mr. Rajesh. Uh, uh, bilingual interdisciplinary faculty of science and in engineering undergraduate course EJU is must, but this year June session was cancelled. So is there any further updates on this issue? Uh, for the bilingual course, you do not need EJU. You only need EJU if you're going to pursue your studies in Japanese. Okay. Uh, can you please elaborate on the uh, requirements for master degree in education? So um, we do not offer master's degrees in education for non-Japanese students. Okay. And uh, any technical course offered by Shimane University as uh, the uh, Mr. Siddharth wants to switch from humanities to technical background along with uh, learning Japanese. Yeah, Japanese is a very good option. Like uh, universities offer opportunities for learning uh, Japanese there. So would this be undergraduate or graduate? Uh, he has not mentioned anything, but uh, like, is there any technical course offered to switch from humanities? Basically, he's uh, having, I think, humanities background and right. wishes to switch to technical background. So especially if you're a master's or a doctoral student, um, the main part is the main 
the most important part is finding a professor. So it doesn't really matter if what your other previous background is, as long as you can convince a professor that you are very interested in their research, like read everything that they've put out, um, do all of your research about that professor and get them to support your research. And then if you write a convincing research plan, then you should have no problem changing. Yes, I think that is a very interesting and a very good suggestion by Professor Simpson. Uh, do we have a computer science course at Shimani? Uh, not necessarily computer science. So it depends on whether it's, you know, obviously undergraduate or graduate. So, but for both of them, it ends up being informational systems design and data science. So it's very, that's the closest thing that we have. So you can that do that. That includes, I think, electronics and communication also? Um, yes, the, we also have departments um, in electro, elect, electrical and electronic engineering as well. So um, you can, you're free to take classes from either department. Okay. Um, but you have that for the bilingual course, the master's course, and the doctoral course. Okay. Uh, Professor Simpson, uh, you can continue answering the questions that are there in the Q&A box as you have been frequently answering the questions I can see. So I would like to finish the session with uh, Simani University. Okay. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Simpson. So uh, I will just uh, share the agenda. Where are we? We have finished the today's session. And uh, so great. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. It was a wonderful opportunity for the young minds to interact with academia and serving professionals to understand the study and work environment in Japan. As it is brought out, uh, Japan gives you the best opportunities to learn and simultaneously earn through part-time opportunities without affecting your studies. And the em employment opportunities post-studies are the best uh, in the world in Japan having the highest employment opportunities with the happy, hefty perks and benefits. Uh, I must say that many students have come here and made it their home and settled with their families. We again request everyone to visit the website of Utokyo India office as given in the chat box and visit the website of the concerned universities with the links given in the chat box. And uh, I request all to send emails for detailed inquiries for easing out and charting out the path for students before coming to Japan. Thank you again for joining us today and we will see you in the next upcoming webinar on June 18 and June 25. Uh, sayonara. Bye-bye.